On this episode of Secure Digital Life, we're going to talk about WikiLeaks. What else is anybody talking about today? It's insane. And we're going to talk about net neutrality, which sounds like two very different things, leaks, neutrality, but tune in. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I was at a PG show. And I'm really yeah. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You oh. Oh, you moved my you put my camera over here. Eh, there cut. You basically forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. Hi, it's Secure Digital Life. I'm Doug White. This is Russ Boschman. Hi. We're here to talk about all kinds of things today. Uh, primarily, we're going to talk about uh, WikiLeaks, uh, I think, initially. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, so, so yesterday, uh, I, different news outlets broke that WikiLeaks had uncovered the this, this secret of Vault 7, mm -hmm. which Vault sounds seven. like a video game getting I put know. together. And uh, it's like Laura Croft mm -hmm. penetrates the tomb of Vault 7 or something Sounds like that. Sounds very strange, but yeah, yes. let's not go there. Um, I can't help myself. <laughs> but um, so anyway, so what this is, if you aren't familiar, you've probably seen something about it. We thought we would talk about it a little bit. This is apparently a treasure trove of CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, uh, hacking tools that are designed to uh, attack all kinds of Internet of Things. And, and we've talked about Internet of Things, and if you've watched any of the other shows, everybody talks about Internet of Things all day, all day, all day. They usually say IoT, but, mm -hmm. which is what I'll say. But, um, and so there's a lot of sort of, uh, sort of in some, some camps, it's like panic mode. So, so the, the big brother people are like freaking out because it's like, oh, my God, they're watching me. Mm -hmm. So like one of the things that I saw was, was this thing called Weeping Angel. Mm-hmm. You want to tell them what Weeping Angel Weeping is? Weeping Angel is a reference to my favorite sci-fi show, which is Doctor Who. Uh, and it, it's about a quantumly locked organism um, that uh, every when you look at it, uh, it stands still. But if you look away, uh, the angel comes to life and can move. Right. So, and it kills people. So it's Schrodinger's, you know, Sh yeah. a Schrodinger's kind of thing. If yeah. you if you observe something, but not changes. his cat because it, we don't know well, if it's dead or alive. It would be a weeping cat. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. <laughs> Cats don't weep. They just they just annoy you <laughs> and, until you you're like, mm, I had that this morning. <laughs> my cat learned a new word too. It, what? It, it says hello. Hello. Oh my god. And it's just like that's what you wake up to. So the cat's like, come pet me. I love you, uh, but only as long as you pet me. And then I just want to throw up on your bed. <laughs> but so Weeping Angel was a piece of this that was revealed. And they haven't revealed the whole thing. And the initial document was like, I don't know, like 8,000 pages yeah. or something. It's this crazy giant mm -hmm. WikiLeaks thing. So there's all this controversy about what, say, like we, we, Weeping Angel might actually do. Mm -hmm. And initially, what Weeping Angel is is it's a, it's essentially a uh, a backdoor into Samsung phones, mm -hmm. and so the idea would be that if you have a backdoor, so so this is this is an old old programming, old old hacking thing. People find these usually in the old days. These were things that were left. So if I leave something in a program that's listening, a demon, we've talked about demons mm -hmm. before on the show, if that demon is listening, that's called a backdoor. And that means somebody could connect to that demon somehow. So the idea of this, and, and, and security organization, the government, have been chasing this stuff for years and years and years. And, and I read this article about uh, this whole thing, and, and a CIA person said that it was really challenging to dedicate $1.5 million worth of hardware and assets, which I took to mean people, to capturing something off of, a, of an iPhone. Right. So they have spent instead a great deal of money developing their internal resources. And some of this is controversial, too, because the NSA, which I know you've heard about if you've ever seen movies or you've seen, you know, sneakers, sneakers. or any of these other kind of movies like we have up on the shelf here. The NSA, the National Security Administration, supposedly has jurisdiction over what is called signals intelligence. And signals intelligence means intercepting radio, mm -hmm. whatever, monitoring it for inappropriate or whatever kind of behaviors. But the CIA has always been left to their own devices to collect intelligence so they can do whatever they want. 
And so some of it's very James Bondy, you know, kind of stuff. Like you know, Q is down in the in the basement developing, you know, Weeping Angel as a tool to so that Bond can do something suave. I, I need an unfiltered uh, three gold ring cigarette <laughs> here to to sit here and go, oh, money penny, <laughs> Miss Money. Thank you, Miss Money Penny. <laughs> Thank you, Money Penny. Put the put the USB in the drive. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, but. But, I mean, so the CIA developed all these tools, and now they got leaked by someone. And there's some questions about, did the CIA get hacked? Right. So this is one huge issue uh, that, that, is, that comes to light, is what if the CIA got compromised? Yep. And the former director of the CIA was on saying there was no way that, that, that someone gave this up. They must have been compromised. And so that controversy starts... Then add to the controversy that maybe the CIA is not supposed to be doing this stuff anyway... And then add to the controversy that who owns WikiLeaks? Julian Assange. Well, who owns Julian Assange? How do you say his name? Assange. 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 Uh, (laughs) The Russians own him. I mean, supposedly the Russians are involved in all this stuff. Sorry, Russians. So they've got Assange. They've got Snowden right now. They have everybody. Because it's like you know, hey, who doesn't want to live in Moscow in the winter? Right. It's yeah. like, although where where does where does uh, Edward Snowden live? He lives in Bra- does he live in Russia? Yeah, yeah. Uh, supposedly. Uh, yeah, I thought he went to Brazil or somewhere. Mm. Just uh. kind of like, well, Moscow, Brazil, it's almost the same thing. <laughs> Not quite, but um, so so Weeping Angel supposedly would allow them to actually get into the phone, and here's why that's important. So we, uh, the reason that it's important to get into an, a phone is because on the phone. A lot of stuff could be encrypted. We did a show, and one of the shows you've probably seen already, about VPNs on your phone. Right. But if I could get on this phone in front of the VPN, so I'm actually accessing your phone through some other mechanism, mm. the VPN won't protect you at all. Right. I can see what you're doing. I can see who you're dialing. Or better yet, I could download your address book yep. off the phone. And I don't know what Weeping Angel does specifically, because I, I, right. they haven't really released all the grim details yet. And we'll probably get maybe some of the other people on the other shows to, to maybe... I'll, I'll get somebody to read that 8,000-page document and write us a brief summary. <laughs> and we'll do five minutes on, <laughs> on an 8,000-page document later. But so that's what Weeping Angel did. And then there are a whole bunch of these things, and they all have like really cool James Bond kind of names. Yeah, yeah. So I looked at another one. Swamp Thing. Or... Well, yeah, I, I, I looked at one called Crunchy Lime Skies. And Crunchy Lime Skies was a set of preprocessor instructions. So this is something that you use when you write a computer program. And the preprocessor instructions would essentially build backdoors into uh, a, a program that got compiled. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the platform that this was for was for um, Unix. And so that means that if you built a program on a Unix system and that instruction set was there, they would have a great deal of access to this. So how does this get back to the Internet of Things? You, you want to talk about Internet of Things in that context? So, so the, the interesting that the Internet of Things, since, they've, since each, each device, um, like, for instance, watch or refrigerator, has its own processor, has its own chipset in it, like we had talked about in another show. Um, yeah, there you go. Chipset. 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 Right, chipset in a refrigerator, chipset. My car has a chipset. My phone has a chipset. Phone has, yeah. So all of these chipsets are pre-programmed instructions that are sent out from somewhere wherever the chipsets are manufactured. Most of them are in Taiwan, China, and but there's no there's no global there's no global consortium that that I know of uh, that 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 checks these chipsets or these instruction sets before they're sent out for right. inclusion into s- a specific devices. Exactly. Actually, I'm going to grab this hard. Yeah. So, so if I work in a factory mm-hmm. and I write, and each one of these chips then has instructions that are coded onto it, and this is really what this whole thing about Internet of Things that everybody keeps talking about is about, and I could literally, whether I did it with my own interests in mind, mm-hmm. so I could just be, you know, junior evil hacker part mm-hmm. 35,000, and I say, I'm going to build a backdoor into this Intel chipset that I'm manufacturing in some place, and then I will have this secret. But what if a nation state did it? Yep. And 
So one of the things that, that really evolved, and you remember the show last week, we were talking about the, the senator's document and how the government is starting to say, well, the biggest threat is a nation state. Mm -hmm. Imagine the amount of resources that nation states can throw at this kind of stuff and the amount of influence that they might have, especially in maybe, say, less free countries where the government is more oppressive and they could step in and say, we want you to put these instructions. Here's a set of instructions. Put them in every chip that you make. Yep. Don't ask questions. If you do, you'll disappear. Yep. All of a sudden, there's a chipset in every hard drive. Yep. There's a chipset in, like we just said, every phone, every headset. Everything's got a chipset in it. And, all, and what if you could get to that? So now this, this brings us to a new term that we, I don't think we've ever used in a show before. Zero-day attack. Oh, yeah, zero-day. Yeah. A zero-day attack, if you don't know what it is, it means a, 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 an exploit that no one has found before. So it's not known. Mm -hmm. And if you had a zero-day exploit in a chipset, imagine what you could do with that. Yep. So the CIA was exploring finding these things. And then unlike uh, junior hacker clubs or whatever who explore them and then go to a conference and tell everybody about it or whatever, they were protecting these pieces of information because they want to use them to exploit assets in other places. So if they've got an agent in uh, India and that agent is carrying an iPhone... Wouldn't it be handy if you had a way to target that agent and extract information without their knowledge? And yeah. I mean, and that's that's to me the ultimate subtle kind of hacking model, where I can get stuff from you and you don't know I'm getting it. So essentially, it turns all of these IoT devices or anything that really has a chipset in it into a a zombie net or a botnet, right? That's un unawakened yet. Well, and that, then that's, all they need is a master command program. MCP. Well, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing it could do. It could also turn it into just a, a thing that sends a burst that has your address book in mm -hmm. it. Because if I was if I was an Intel agent. And I knew there were all these bad guys in, in just pick some country at random. Mm -hmm. And if I could dump your address books and see who was talking to whom and, you know, what numbers they were dialing or, or if I could do that. So that would be an awfully powerful thing for an intelligence agent to be able to do if they could just sit in a hotel room somewhere, jump online and, yep. and, and you know, nail a bunch of phones. That's part of it. Yep. The Internet of Things then also expands into the idea of television. So this was the one I already got asked a bunch. I had a bunch of emails and a bunch of requests. Uh, and, and, and keep comments coming on, on YouTube. You guys have been putting all kinds of great comments up and questions and all sorts of stuff. So put them up there and we'll answer them. But um, the thing about the televisions uh, was pretty interesting to me. And, but it was also something I, I've, I've heard of before. There's an episode of Black Mirror, if you've never seen that show. It's a really great cool show. If you've yeah. never seen Black Mirror, it's a really cool show. Um, they don't pay me to say that either. It's, it's, oh, they it's should. Really so Black Mirror, you know who you are. Just, Netflix just, owns it. Yeah. Make that check out to Doug White at Roger Williams <laughs> University. And uh, But um, there was an episode of Black Mirror where they activated someone's laptop camera. Mm -hmm. So hackers had compromised that. And that's been around for a long, long time. Yeah. And, and the idea, and in fact, there's companies that sell little tapes you can put over your camera when you're not using them and things like that, just in case. And they were blackmailing people then with the video footage they captured or whatever they were doing. Yeah. Uh, but the idea of this was that uh, the CIA could activate a television set remotely and and somehow hear the audio on it, in which I'm not sure exactly how that works. If it was a smart TV, it had vo voice instruction. Or I voice guess, set, yeah. yeah. And I mean, and that's that's one of these really dangerous things that we a lot of people don't think about. Is like right. my car has voice command. Mine too. Which means it has a transducer, which yep. means it could actually listen, as opposed to just like an old TV has a speaker, which is just output. You, it couldn't listen to something. I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's even possible to do to do that. Maybe James Bond could do it, but you know, he or would. Or MacGyver. Yeah. He and he would look good doing it in a tuxedo <laughs> or something. And, or, yeah, MacGyver's another one, right, that takes, yeah. like, he took, like, a paper clip yep. and a match and, and yeah. you know, and like... solved an, the world's problems. Like an old diaper, and then he comes out of the building with a tank or body armor or something. He was my hero growing up. Really? Oh, I don't yeah. think I've ever really watched that show. But it's not much fun anymore. Yeah? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, it's back then it was, not now. But what if we could listen on your TV set? So yeah. now I can just go to your house and I can flip the TVs on and and and, and listen to what you're what you're doing, and that would be a kind of complex thing. And so this gets everybody all worked up. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, to you about the law mm -hmm. and and what this means for Americans. So so we're being a little geocentric here, but yeah. but but. In the United States, and maybe you're watching this from somewhere else, and the laws are different all over the world, but in the United States, the CIA doesn't have 
uh, the authority to actually investigate citizens inside the boundaries. You know, I mean, and we can always get into all kinds of wacky conspiracy theories that, oh, they're doing all this stuff or whatever. And if that's true, then it's true. But, but theoretically, they're not doing that to, to American citizens inside the United States. But <laughs> there is the Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. Have you ever read the Patriot Act? Not all of it, no. No, okay. Well, how much of it did you read? Maybe a couple of pages for for a class. Yeah, I think I took. it's like six thousand. Yeah, pages <laughs> a longer. couple of pages for. Well, it's six. over there on page five thousand yeah, nine hundred and forty-five, subsection, subsection seventeen, four, stroke nine. nine yeah. It says basically that you can be for- forced to be in a human centipede whether you want to or not. No, but in a state of emer- was it in the state of emergency? Every other paragraph in this thing is yeah. Is, is, <laughs> it's whatever. all null and void. Yeah, it's all null and void. Yeah, it's like we can do whatever we want. So just shut up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the point is, is that in the United States, wiretapping, which is also been a big issue lately. Um, wiretapping is essentially a federal crime. So if you wiretap someone, so if you're out there and you have access to these tools, <laughs> don't use them because you're actually committing a, a huge well, violation. Yeah. So they would theoretically need warrants uh, that, that would have to be issued from federal court to actually come and effectively wiretap because that's what this would be. This would be considered a wiretap. Now, if you're a, a private citizen doing it, you can get in just a lot of trouble, and the law enforcement people get in trouble too if they do it without warrants. So they would theoretically have to present evidence in court and bring all that down. So I'm not as worried about that at my house in my in, on my television, which I haven't checked for voice commands yet. So now everybody can start talking. Just go to your TV right now while you're there. Just walk over to the nearest TV that's near you and start saying, hello, are you, are you there? Hello, and then people will think you're crazy. And it'll hello, be amusing. hello, hello, hello. Yeah, unless, unless it talks back. There. That's when it gets back and goes, yes, this is the CIA. Do you need help? <laughs> and uh, my car did that to me once. I didn't know. And I, yeah, I was in my car, and I was just like, I don't know. I was ta- probably talking to myself about something. And, and then this voice goes, hi, are you having a problem? And I was like... No, God. Maybe it's not your cat that's saying hero in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. I'm just picking up like a yeah. badly accented English pick, voice yeah. coming right, off my radio. My t- oh, that's a good one. You Tell them tell about that. You know about Lucille Ball and the tooth filling? No, tell me. You oh, she that? picking up the radio stations? On Lu- her- Lucille Ball. Who, I love Lucy, all this stuff from a long time ago. Lucille Ball was obsessed with, uh, look it up, there's all kinds of YouTubes of her talking about it, that she could pick up radio stations and she thought they were like communist broadcast and all kinds of stuff on the fillings in her teeth. And uh, she she was on Johnny Carson and all these talk shows talking about it. And then later, the Mythbusters were talking about that there was at least some possibility that that some of that was accurate. That's crazy. So that whole piece of of, of WikiLeaks mm-hmm. is kind of scary to a lot of people. Um, now, some of the stuff I saw, some of the outrage, so I, I, I try to read like a balance of articles. So I was reading stuff on NPR, yep. which I thought was very balanced. I was reading stuff on like some, so like, um, I was reading stuff on some f- kind of conservative sort Fox of News. leaning. It wasn't Fox. I'm not going that far, but I was, I was looking at some conservative sites. And then I was also looking at some wacky liberal type, you know, sites that are like conspiracy theory oriented kind of places. And everybody was freaking out about this, that, that our government was, you know, was building hacking tools and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, what do you think about, about the government building hacking tools? I think that, I mean, if they are doing it, which I imagine that they are, that they wouldn't let us know. I, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with it, but the, but some of the crazy stuff I've seen from consumers, from non-governmental people and, and, and surveillance and things like that and creating devices, we don't need a government to do it. We've, we're doing it ourselves, especially through social media, um, you know, and, and things of that nature. Dro- we were talking about drones earlier off, off camera and... You know, I mean, I think with the technologies that we have that currently exist, we are the biggest danger to ourselves. The, well, the non-governmental. I, I mean, my opinion on it is is that is that technology and hacking has become weaponized, mm-hmm. and I don't have a problem with That's that right. because we saw this start to develop in the late '90s, early mm-hmm. 2000s. Uh, government entities started getting concerned. What if? So imagine that there's a tank somewhere, a tank, you know, like a tank with a big gun on it, and it, it's got chips in it. It does. Where did those chips come from? China. So all of a sudden there's a threat. Yeah. And so the government for the last who knows how long has been spending time focused on developing solutions. So this is offensive solutions. Yeah. So the CIA is, is in charge of getting intelligence. So their job is to go out in foreign countries and collect information about what's going on. There are companies that do this for the dark web. There's companies that do this commercially. There's companies that do it for governments. And there's companies that do it for nation states, whether it's ours or it's someone else's. So to me, 
this is spy biz as usual. I mean, these guys have been developing all kinds of wacky stuff, and if you go to the Spy Museum in D.C., you can see all kinds of wacky nonsense that they spent huge amounts of money on, from exploding cigarette lighters to, uh, what was it they tried to do to Fidel Castro? Oh, I don't... They, they tried to do something to him. They were trying to poison him. And they were experimenting with, like, like poisoned milkshakes, because I think that was the guy I'm thinking about, because he, he liked milkshakes. And they had, like, a, like a I don't know, it was a poisoned comb or something they were going to try to plant on him so he would comb his hair and, like, I don't know, get, go bald or something. Yeah. It wasn't even, like, going to kill him. <laughs> it was just going to make him go bald. It doesn't look like Castro anymore. Yeah, and he, he, he looks weak. <laughs> he, like, must be strong. Must be like strong. bull. Like bull. Like bull, Jake. Yeah. But... So the, I, to me, the CIA has been doing this stuff and should be doing this stuff all along. So they should be developing toolkits to, in order to defend their, I mean, that's their job. And I think there's a lot of issues about privacy. And I certainly, although I'm so boring, I don't think they'd ever watch me for long. It's just kind of like they turn on the wiretap. And, you know, when they do wiretaps, they have to listen for a little while to see if it's relevant. And then they have to turn it off. Uh, I think. I saw that on TV, so who knows if it's true. <laughs> I think that's on The Sopranos, so you shouldn't base all your legal knowledge on The Sopranos. <laughs> but, but, but I've been plugging everybody today, I'm telling you. It's just like HBO, you HBO, owe me, man. HBO, Netflix. What's, ne what's Black Mirror on? Netflix. It's on, that's a Netflix show, so you know, set, keep those cards and letters pouring in. But um, I, I do worry about privacy. I'm really boring, and I don't really do anything that's that exciting, and I don't care if somebody's tracking my GPS. But I also feel that that is the sort of gateway to scarier things sure. and monitoring people and tracking people. And I think that's why people get so worked up about it because they don't want, they don't want to be tracked. It's like, um, uh, I don't know if, if anyone's familiar with out there, a Google Dashboard, which is if you go to dashboard.google.com and you're an Android user or a Chromebook user or any kind of Google user, um, it gives you a nice little breakdown of everything about right. you and however long you've been using Android or however long you've been doing whatever you've been doing. And I show that to my students in the, in the SEC 100 course um, sometimes, and, and they, they get all freaked out. Like, and one of my students has said, hey, uh, Russ, he says, uh, it says I'm in Pennsylvania right now, and I'm clearly sitting in your classroom here in Providence. What's up? I'm like, yeah, you have a problem, son. Your phone's either been cloned yeah. or it's check your pocket because your phone's not with you. And it's super scary. Like, they can get down to all the purchases I've bought no, using Google Wallet, but in a nice little dashboard interface. So. And, I mean, part of me likes it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean me too. But. I mean, there's this whole thing that, that, that kind of creeps you out, but it also you kind of yeah. like it because yeah. I'm sitting there watching ads, and I'm seeing ads for stuff I like yep. instead of stuff I don't know anything about. Right. I, can, I can even tell when, like, one of my family members used my Amazon account because right. it's like all of a sudden it's like, what what the hell is this? <laughs> like, I, I don't like this. And then you get used to that. So, but... But do I really want to? I won't even get into what this was, but but it could be exciting too. Oh you know, yeah! Like, oh, you know, oh, look what showed up today. Yeah, Valentine's you know, Day is oh. coming. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but um, but at the same time, you do worry about like how are these things being used and what's the oversight of them. And so there has been this kind of fight between the NSA and the CIA, and all these agencies are developing these tools. So for that part of it, don't don't panic. Right. I think that's a lesser concern to me than how are they being implemented and how are they being used. The biggest threat, to back to the U.S.-centric view, the biggest threat to the United States is the fact that all this got leaked. Yep. So now you've got your secret milkshake tool. Yep. That you're going to use. That brings boys to the yard. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm, I'm, le I'm leaving. <laughs> <It's> just, no. <laughs> if he's going to start that. <laughs> but um, but you, you've got the secret exploding milkshake that you're going to take people out with. And now that the fact that you have it has been revealed, it becomes of no use. And this is true of zero-day exploits for the most part. So the minute they're found and somebody has them, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Sony, Samsung, whom whomever, says we're, not, we're no longer vulnerable to Weeping Angel, and they release a, a patch. And then now the CIA is back where they started saying, well, we have to hope we get an old unpatched cell phone. We can't, we can't take these out. And like I say, I have very mixed feelings about it because part of me is saying we should be able to do these things. Right. I mean, you want to be able to defend your, your I don't know, your, your sovereignty from hostile foreign nation states. Yeah. But at the same time, are those tools then going to be turned on your own citizens and, and used wantonly? What if they're just being used for fun? Mm -hmm. You know, this was what, uh, if you've seen the movie Snowden, another plug. Wow, it's like... Uh, we some, went to that. Though, right? Somebody yeah. sponsor this. Come on, HBO. Um, Snow, you know, Snowden, the whole movie, yeah, Russ and I went 
and saw that together. The whole point of Snowden was, was that he was concerned about the level of surveillance the NSA was doing yeah. on private citizens without warrants, without any kind of right. cause or anything else. So I don't know. My, my, I'll use the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and say don't panic and, and take a towel because you can always hang the <laughs> towel over your TV set. Don't forget your towel. And then they can't see you. Um, but if they're not seeing you anyway, they're just listening. I don't know. Maybe you need some like headphone covers for your TV's like intake. Um, but, you know, I don't do stuff in front of your TV you don't want your cats to see or, or whatever. I don't know. But, but so next time. Or kill your television. Next week, Russ is going off to Stonehenge. Yeah, he's never getting back in the country either. After this show, <laughs> you wait. I'm out. I'm done. Those cavity search guides are out. And, Oof, and I'm ready and willing, babe. They're intrusive. And, uh, but uh, but um, nevertheless, uh, I will be here, and we're gonna, we will talk about net neutrality and start talking about how to neutralize yourself on the interwebs, because uh, I'm going to talk about uh, ProtonMail, and I'm going to talk about Tor, and some of these kind of tools, and I'll do some demos so I can show you how to set those things up if you want to use them and further, further lower your online profile. But a lot of this is hard to do at this point in history. I mean, if you want to be functional, you can go off the grid and grow a big, long you know, be <laughs> beard and, you know, and get your shotgun and sit on the front porch and wait for those night. damn kids. Wait for dawn. <laughs> okay, we just got to survive till the sun comes up. <laughs> but, um, or or you, can, you can continue to use social media and function in the world and maybe be monitored by someone so I don't know it's kind of scary but uh, we'll talk about that next time so in the meantime thanks Russ for being here thanks Doug thanks everybody for watching keep watching keep sending those comments in yep we'll see you next time on Secure Digital Life peace <laughs>